A couple of months ago, I saw my first Studio Ghibli film, Howl's Moving Castle. And what can I say? It lives up to the hype. The art and animation is breathtaking. There's love and romance, and let's be honest, Howl's got enough riz to have anyone fold like a cheap lawn chair. There you are, sweetheart. Sorry I'm late. I was looking everywhere for you. Hey, hey, we're busy here. Are you really? It looked to me like the two of you were just leaving. But what I think is maybe most interesting is how this story views love. Hal and Sophie are two sides of the same coin. Two messy people afraid of being loved brought together by circumstance. I'm sure most of you have heard the conventional wisdom that you first must love yourself before you can love another, but Hal's Moving Castle seemingly challenges this notion. So let's take a look at how Hal's Moving Castle navigates insecure love. But before we begin, this video was brought to you by you, the audience. You guys voted that Howl's Moving Castle is better than Spirited Away, so here we are. If you'd like to keep up with any upcoming polls or enjoy my videos, please like and subscribe as it really helps the channel grow so I can continue making more. Now, back to the video. You are a natural. Like I said, Hal and Sophie are two sides of the same coin. They both begin rather insecure in themselves, particularly in regard to self-image. First, with Sophie, she doesn't see her own beauty, something I think which gets in the way of her own self-confidence and is something that's on full display. She looks in the mirror trying on her hat and is displeased with herself. Later, after her first encounter with Hal, as Sophie is speaking with her younger sister Letty, Sophie was genuinely surprised that Hal had rescued her. She was more in shock by Hal's kindness to rescue her than the implication of what those men would have done to her if he didn't. Of course he did. He was trying to steal your heart. You are so lucky, Sophie. If that wizard were Hal, he would have eaten it. No, he wouldn't. Hal only does that to beautiful girls. Don't give me that. From the beginning, it's evident that Sophie's outwardly a person with little self-love and extremely low self-esteem. I think it's likely why she's reserved and denies doing things for herself that make her happy because I don't think she feels she deserves it. Sophie quickly assumes the role of a cleaning lady because her sense of self-worth is tied up into her usefulness to others. She seeks external validation through her work due to feeling inherently inadequate. And then, on the flip side, there's Hal. I'd appreciate it if you didn't torment my friend. Hal is a lot like Sophie in that he's also insecure with low self-esteem, but hides it much better. On the surface, Hal's known for being a confident ladies' man. I mean, from the moment we first see him, he swiftly rescues Sophie and literally sweeps her off her feet. Hal's got a reputation that precedes him in an aura of mystique that captures the imagination. But we see his entire facade crumble the moment his hair gets dyed. With something as small as his hair changing color, Hal immediately believes he's repulsive. Hal's ego and confidence, unlike Sophie, is wrapped up completely in his appearance. He even goes as far as admitting to Sophie how scared he truly is. I'm such a big coward, all I do is hide. And all of this magic is just to keep everybody away. I can't stand how scared I am. He may love his self-image more than Sophie, but it's only skin deep. When the war begins, he initially attempts to avoid service because he has nothing to fight for, no one he loves, no one worth protecting. Because of this, it only makes sense that his curse is opposite of Sophie's. Sophie is turned old and must learn to love herself and embrace that she is beautiful and worth more than her acts of service to others, and Hal, who's separated from his heart, must learn that he's also worth love despite his appearance. Our two leads have the same issues, but they manifest in opposite ways. Sophie could always see the value in others no matter what they looked like, and we see that with Turnip Head, despite her hating turnips since she was little. And Hal could always see the innate beauty in others separate from their acts of service, which is why he sees a young Sophie as she sleeps. But what about the old adage that to love another, you must first love yourself? 
For starters, I don't think this is necessarily bad advice in all instances. If you're in a place where your insecurities would actively harm yourself or another person, by all means you should take the time to love yourself, not in an egotistical way, but in a way where you can at least be receptive and conductive in a healthy relationship. But I think an important note here is that neither Hal nor Sophie at any point are that far gone. In the beginning, they both suffer with self-love in their own ways, but neither seem to dis display self-hatred. Neither of them tore each other down due to their insecurities, but rather built the other up in the areas where they needed it most, because they complement each other. I think the lesson is you don't have to achieve your perception of perfect before you can ever love someone. Insecurities, low self-esteem, and even lack of self-love are natural. It happens to the beautiful Sophies and the confident Hal's of the world. But just like Hal and Sophie, you can learn to love yourself not predicated on external validation from your partner, but by being shown that even the parts of yourself you consider ugly are worth loving anyways. And as someone who personally struggles themselves with many of these same issues, I hope I too can find my Sophie. I kind of missed you guys, and it looks like it's gonna rain. I missed you too, Calcifer. Wow! Hey, thanks for watching, and if you've made it this far, I really appreciate it and want to know your thoughts on Howl's Moving Castle down below. I hope all of you are doing well, and I know the holiday season is quickly approaching, which can be a stressful time for many, so let me know if there's anything you'd like me to cover. Until next time, peace.